I took my MK Indy ZX10 to Cadwell Park recently, that's in one of my other videos. Uh, I thought it might be quite nice to go back through that footage and look at some analysis of breaking points, turning points, apexes, that kind of thing. So I've put together a kind of hot lap based on some of the good bits of that video. Um, and then we're going to go through it in some detail. I'll pause it, talk about different bits of the track. And then uh, at the end, I'm going to then just let the video run again. So you'll then get to see the whole thing at full speed and then maybe appreciate some of the bits that we've talked about as we've gone through it. So this is the first corner coppice, the turning points on the right in red and the apex is in green. So uh, in quite a few cars this is flat, uh, in, certainly in something like a Caterham. Um, the MK is very nearly flat but it's on pretty rubbish tyres to be fair. Uh, my Clio 200 it's kind of on cold tyres, it's a bit of a lift on in a, on, on warm tyres, it's, it's possible to take this flat. So it just depends on, on your particular car. So we're at Coppice now, uh, car's nicely over to the left, taking a little bit of curb. Hopefully we'll be able to keep the car on the left hand side as we exit, which will set us up nicely for going into Charlie's. So we've exited Coppice, we're now looking to go into the first part of Charlie's. So I've highlighted the apex, the first apex, uh, this is like a double apex sequence of two corners together. Uh, we're nicely over on the left hand side we can get a, a really quite a nice clean line through here now. So we're into the first part of Charlie's. So you can see I went sort of roughly at the apex but you can also see that the exit of the corner it really isn't clear to us at this point. It's kind of on faith that there is quite a lot of width that you can use. Um, you can actually carry a lot of speed through here because it's uphill and because of the way the camber is you, you can actually carry a surprising amount of speed through here. So we're coming into the second part of Charlie's now. So we've we've used a lot of the width of the track, which is quite good, carried quite a lot of speed through so far. We're on the left-hand side, ready to take a nice line through the second part of Charlie's onto the the back straight. It's quite good to get quite a, uh, good to get a good exit here because you're going to carry a lot of speed onto the straight. So you can see that the apex of the corner is actually in green. There is actually quite a long way around the corner. Um, I tend to find with this, I tend to turn in quite early and then try and hold quite a tight line and then run, let it run wide, but that might be different depending on depending on your car. So we're exiting Charlie's now onto the park straight. So I've highlighted in red sort of roughly where I'm aiming for with the exit. Um, it's important not to run too wide here. Uh, it's quite bumpy on the exit. The, the curb on the exit is quite rough. There's some kind of grass creek on the outside. You really don't want to be there. Um, it would be quite easy, especially if it was wet, to make quite a mess of it. So you want to sort of use the width of the track, but no more at this point. So we're approaching the breaking point for park. Um, now, depending on your car, depends, you know, how obviously how late you can brake. If you've got a big, heavy, powerful car, you're going to have to. You're going to be carrying a lot of speed. You've got a lot of mass to slow down. You're going to need to brake fairly early. In the MK, we can brake quite late. It, I'm normally on a, in a kit car like a Caterham or something like that, braking around the sort of the 100 meter board. So we're just approaching a 300 meter board at the moment. So we've got quite a long way to go. I'm still hard on the throttle at this, at this point. In some cars, you'd be really thinking about braking at this point. So you'll just have to sort of figure out where your braking point is, depending on your on your own car. So we're at park corner now, so we've braked, we're possibly still on the brakes if we're looking to brake up to the apex, which I think in a racing situation you would try to be. Um, we're on the left hand side, we're going to hopefully get a good run through here. Now you can take a little bit of curb on the inside, but it does unsettle the car a bit, but you can. You can take a little bit of curb on the exit, but again it's quite rough, it unsettles the car a little bit. It's probably best to sort of avoid the curbs here completely. Um, it's there's only really one line through this corner, and it's a corner that I never really feel like I've got right, even though it probably doesn't look too bad. Um, it's quite easy to outbreak yourself and end up running slightly wide, possibly going off onto sort of the grass creek just on the just on the exit of the corner. Uh, it's a tricky corner. It's probably the only corner at Cadwell that I don't really like because it never really feels that satisfying. So I never really feel like I've really nailed it. So we're 
coming up to Chris Curve now. So um, I'm normally going from third to fourth in, in, in most cars at this point. I tend to find if I, I, I can go in in third, but I then end up short. I end up shifting up to fourth at a point where I don't really want to be changing gear. And I tend to find in third, either in a front-wheel drive car, uh, it, it's pulling the car wide. In a rear-wheel drive car, it's making it a little bit... It's getting the back end being a bit too much, too playful. I tend to find fourth gear, slightly lower revs, it gives you a nice stable entry into the corner and you can then start building up speed as you go around Chris Curve. <laughs> So we're coming up to the gooseneck. Now, the gooseneck's got um, a lot of elevation, it's got a lot of direction change, uh, sort of compression, and you're going around sort of downhill. You want the car to be really nice and stable. Um, you don't really want to be unsettling the car on the way in. So what I tend to favour is I, I'm not braking, I'm lifting, possibly a, possibly a slight gentle brake, but I want the car to be really nicely settled. I want the car to be sort of... I want the weight weight to be transferred and in place, ready to I can turn in, and I know what the car's going to do. It's not going to squirm around. I certainly wouldn't want to be changing gear while trying to enter the gooseneck because that's going to unsettle the car. I want the car to be in the right gear and be nice and settled as I go into it, because I've got to I've got to take a quite a big change of direction halfway through. I don't want any surprises. <laughs> So hopefully at this point we've got our speed right, the car's feeling nice and balanced, and we can start to think about turning in towards towards the apex. So we've got ourselves into a nice position with, with the first part of the gooseneck. So we're, we've got a nice entry, the car's not been moving around, we're on the apex of the right-hander. Now you can't see the apex of the the left hand part and you can't see anything of the exit you're kind of aiming for where I've highlighted so we're gonna it's it's a slight compression on the first part I mean it, it kind of goes up and then it starts to go downhill so there's quite a lot going on so it's quite easy to end up with the car moving around quite a lot now you really don't want to be going off on the exit of the gooseneck there's some runoff but there's also some barriers and if the grass is wet you're just gonna keep sliding so it's quite crucial that you don't run too wide you can get like a you know a wheel width over the edge of the curb and get away with it if it, especially if it's dry but really you want to keep it nice and nice and tight and, and tidy on the exit so we're coming down to Mansfield now so this is downhill braking uh, on the right hand side aiming for the apex it's it's a nice feeling when you get Mansfield right I don't really know quite why it it has quite a lot of space on the exit. You can potentially get on the power quite early. Um, it just it has just has quite a nice feel about it, Mansfield. In the same way that I really don't like Park for some unknown reason, um, I, I really like Mansfield. Uh, I don't know whether it's the downhill braking or just the sort of feeling you get when you get it just right. It just has quite a nice feel. So so braking on the right hand side, a nice gentle turn in, try and get on the power early, and run wide, open the steering up to take advantage of the fact that there's quite a lot of exit. So the car got a little bit a little bit unsettled there, but still it, it sort of got, got the car rotated quite nicely, so we're pointing towards the exit. And you can see what I meant, that there's quite a lot of uh, space on the exit for you to, if you need to, for you to open the steering up and, and let it run slightly wide. Um, you can get quite an, a good exit out of this. Coming up to the mountain now, so uh, so the entry to the mountain, it's a left-hander, um, so we're going to want to try and be on the right-hand side of the circuit heading in. So you can see I've highlighted where the sort of entry point is uh, into, the, into the mountain, whereas we're on the left-hand side of the track at the minute. Now, what I tend to find is I end up braking... It's, I'm braking in a straight line, but I'm braking sort of diagonally across the circuit. I'm aiming for the right-hand side of the circuit, but I'm starting to brake just as I, we go under the, the, the new pedestrian bridge there, um, heading towards the right-hand right side. We're starting to turn into the mountain now, so I've tried to highlight kind of the apex of the, of the first part. Now, it's... Kind, it's a slightly awkward one. What you want to be on the left-hand side of the mountain as you turn into the right-hand corner. So you want to maximise your run through the right-hand right side. So you're effectively kind of sacrificing 
the first part, the left-hander, to give you the best track position for getting the best exit out of the mountain up the hill. So it's it's crucial that you, as you go around the left hand, the left hander on the way into the mountain, that you get the car over to the left hand side before you make that right hand turn. So uh, you can use quite a lot of curb as well. Um, even even in the the Indy, um, I could hold a tight line uh, around the left hander with the left of the car over the curbs um, to try and get it as far into the left as possible to try and then straight line the right hander as much as possible to get a good run up the mountain uphill. So we've got the car really nicely positioned now. So we're on the left hand side. You can see the apex of the right hand part of the mountain uh, highlighted. And then we're heading for uh, the sort of the middle to the top of the exit curb on the way out. Um, now depending on the on the kind of car that you have, depends kind of on how much curb you can use. So in the Indy, um, I couldn't really take a huge amount of curb on the inside. It's quite rough um, because it unsettled the car too much going up the hill. Um, likewise, I couldn't really use much curb on the exit, again, because it was destabilizing the car and making it just too squirrely going up the hill. Whereas if you've got quite a heavy car, I went in a, on the day I went out in a Megane, and the guy driving that, uh, was able to take quite a lot of kerb on the inside and a bit of kerb on the exit without it really destabilizing the car because again it's sort of just a bigger heavier car um, just reacts differently we're coming up to hall bends now now hall bends is a sequence of four corners so it goes right then left then right then left and then there's a right hand hairpin at the end so the crucial thing really about hall bends is making sure that when you get to the hairpin that you are nicely uh, arriving at the hairpin, braking in a sort of almost a straight line and ready to get a good exit from the hairpin. That's kind of the most important bit. Um, so hall bends, what I tend to find is going into it, I try to treat the right hander on the way in as if it isn't there. I try to treat that as just almost as part of the braking area for the left hander that follows and that's the one that I'm really interested in. So if you watch what happens, I tend to start braking as I'm arriving at the right-hander, but I'm not really braking for the right-hander, I'm braking for the left-hander, getting the car ready to take to take that next step. So we're halfway through hall bends. So we've taken the right-hander, straight-lined that, we've taken the, we've braked, turned for the left, and now we're back on the accelerator, sort of holding a steady throttle almost, uh, through the right hand and now you can see that it's completely blind you can't see the next left and you can't see the hairpin so what I'm trying to do is just get ac across to the right hand side knowing that what's coming what's coming next so we're just coming up towards the hairpin now so I've marked on here the turning point for the entry into the hairpin and roughly where the apex is so you can sort of see that we're gonna have to get the car over to the left hand side in order to make that that right hand turn so we've arrived at the hairpin, uh, so you can see the, the apex on the right and roughly where we're about to turn in. I apologise for my horrendous hand positioning on the wheel, um, I'm not quite sure what I was up to there, I should really have my hands, my hands at 10 and 2. Um, I think maybe my elbow was getting caught on the, the roll bar, on the side impact bar on, on, the, on the right hand side. So I'm aiming to not touch the kerb on the inside. The kerb on the inside has got quite a nasty uh, bump on it, and what it does is it unsettles the car. So in a front-wheel drive car, it means that you end up understeering wide. In a, in a rear-wheel drive car, especially if you clip the inside rear wheel, it just kicks the back end out. So I try and avoid try and avoid that kerb. It just unsettles it, and, and I end up running wide. Uh, on the exit, they normally have either... They'll sometimes have big bales of stuff on the exit to stop you from going off the circuit there, because there's pretty much no runoff. Uh, you don't really want to be using any of the exit here. I don't think it, it, again, it tends to unsettle things. You really want to be nice and clean and tidy through here. So we're just approaching Barn now. Um, I've changed up to third just before entering Barn. I found if I left it in second gear, I would end up changing up or short shifting 
halfway round the corner because it, when I tried to get on the power in second, it well first of all it was putting sort of unnecessary stress on the car, making it a little bit um, unsettled. It was just a lot smoother, simpler, and just felt better being in third gear all the way through here. A bit like uh, earlier on with Chris Curve, I'd change up to fourth before entering the corner, even though at that point that was probably a little bit too high a gear. It paid off later by making the whole, the, the rest of the corner much simpler and much the car much more settled. This is the exit of Barn now. So we've turned in, picked up the apex fairly well, um, and now we're going to let the car drift, unwinding the steering, building up the power, uh, sort of aiming to just brush the white line on the left of the circuit as we exit. It's very easy to run off. There have been plenty of times I've seen people go off at Barn, carrying too much speed in, uh, especially in the wet, because what happens is because it's under trees, it doesn't really dry out that much. If it's if you're on a day a day where it's sort of rained a bit and then it's then then it's then the sun comes out, it's always wet at Barn because it just doesn't dry out very quickly because of the trees overhanging. So there's there's not really any runoff. If you go onto the grass, especially if it's damp, you're just going to end up straight in the straight in the barrier. So what we're trying to do here is trying to just let the car drift wide, um, unwind the steering, get on the power, and then it's slightly downhill onto this start finish straight. Okay, so that's a full lap in detail. Um, that's been really interesting for me to do. I don't really ever look back at my own driving in such a fine level of detail. Um, I hope somebody finds it useful. So what I'm going to do now is play the, the whole lap. So it'll be the same lap as what I've just been through in detail, but run at full speed without me talking over it or pausing it every five seconds. <laughs> 